Hi guys, Marshall here with Tuesday's Training. So I hope you had a good weekend. My weekend went well. I went to a beautiful wedding. A client that actually, you know, got the results that they were looking for. They actually married someone they didn't believe existed and then they met them and they were able to grow in an in organic and natural relationship. And now they're married and off doing their thing. So that's what happens when we stick to the process of healing. So when we stick to our brilliance, we stick to the hope, to the what if. In their wedding vows, they brought that up quite a bit. They're like, what if? What else is possible here? That's the magic of what I teach. It gets us to what we ultimately want to experience. And that's what I want most for you, is to realize that you have the brilliance within you to accomplish what you desire. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about focus and a four, a four elements of focus that help us accomplish happiness and healing in the work that we do, whether it's with me and my systems or with a therapist or with someone else's system, these four elements are essential to your success, okay? So these four elements actually come from my own experience and dealing with healing because I got stuck in a lot of loops. One of the big things I constantly encountered in my own journey outside of codependency, out of my trauma, out of my self-hate, is what I call a therapy loop. That means I go to therapy, I talk about what I'm feeling, the therapist is like, how do you feel about what you're feeling? And, oh yeah, that must have been quite an experience. I feel better, I go home, nothing changes. Does that sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> it's not that therapy isn't doing its job, the therapy of uh, the job of therapy is to create awareness, to create understanding about what you went through. But understanding and awareness and analysis specifically don't create healing, but it does create a container in which to explore things. So in this loop, I decided, you know, I'm going to take some responsibility for my own healing and step out there and start doing it on my own. I started lone wolfing it. That means I got into reading a lot of self-help books. Yay, right? I have have right now close to 200 self-help books that I've read parts of, some of which I've read many times, and that gave me more knowledge. Does this sound familiar? We're getting more and more knowledge. I mean, if that's you, you relate to this, post it below like, yep, that's me, because that's ultimately what gets us stuck in these loops. We're like, oh, I'll read another book. Maybe it'll work this time. And that keeps us distracted. So the next step I did was try to get a lot of tools to heal things. Like I'm going to get the shamanic healing and I'm going to get this energy healing and I'm going to try EMDR and I'm going to try this technique and that technique and this thing and that thing. So I started doing a lot of things and I get little traction here and there, but I wouldn't make an actual shift that was substantial in my life. So the next step I did was I, I got frustrated, honestly. I was like, this isn't working. Is this ever really going to change? Is anything going to change? Am I going to have to suffer with this and cope with this the rest of my life? Is this how it is? Is this as happy as I can expect myself to be? That kind of thing. It was very frustrating. It was very discouraging because I wasn't getting to where I wanted to be. And so I slowed down and I made a decision. I was going to take a risk rather than trying to absorb everything and do everything at once. I was going to focus on one specific process, on one specific pain. And so I started doing that. And I, my first major focus was power. I took time, slowed down, and just focused on getting my power back, rebuilding my boundaries, rebuilding my understanding of how things work. And with that investment, I started to understand something different. In fact, what I started to experience was real results. Things started to change in how I behaved, so I got different results, different experiences with people. I started actually seeing progress. And so, I got a little thingy there. So, I was like, wow, this is actually working. So, I applied it to shame, and then I started seeing progress with that. Less and less shame, more and more curiosity. And as I persisted in that, being very focused, very deliberate with it, more progress, more love started to show up. And I started making the big breakthroughs where it's like, oh, I don't have to 
to be concerned about what somebody thinks of me. My value is intrinsic. People will always, there'll always be people that love and like me. My job is to find them and to cultivate relationships with them. Interesting. Hmm. And then as I worked with this, I started to see systems. I started to see patterns. And then I knew how to create a predictable process for myself that I now teach you guys how to heal and how to thrive. Okay. Then the happiness in my life started to go up because at this point in time, this was like 29, 2010. Ooh, it was dark, dark times in the middle of a divorce, lost my car. I went to the bank, got repoed, um, enormous amounts of debt. The economy had crashed. I homeless with sleeping on the, the uh, floor of a spare room in my sister's house. <laughs> it was a really dark and rough time. My parents were doing their little, uh, the um, smear campaign that, you know, narcissists love to do against people. It was a dark, difficult time. But this is what started to come out of it. I started to see this process and this, hey, I can actually make this happen. So I persisted in it. I basically forced a little bit to get in there and see what it would do. And I started to see reputable results, repeatable results that were fundamentally reliable because it kept coming back every time I applied it, or most times I applied it. So this is what focused or what I call structured healing looks like. This is how it works. And there's four specific elements that will help you make the most out of the healing you focus on, okay? So I want you to have this. So if you've got a little notepad, I want you to write this down. And basically, I'm gonna get my notes up here. This is what it comes down to. Mindset. This is important. Mindset is how we perceive the thing, how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive what we're dealing with, perceive the problem, perceive the success or the failure. So some questions for you to think about when you're addressing your mindset. Are you coming from abundance and curiosity? Are you coming from fear and lack? Are you open and willing to receive? What's your mindset focus? Is it failure or is it success? Is it discovery or is it control? If you want real success, what you want to do is take abundance, the assumption that there is plenty available for you, plus curiosity. These two will give you the ability to receive what shows up and learn from it because the things that happen in your life are lessons. They're your teacher. They're your mentor. They're going to help you understand how to change things so you get closer to that mark that you call success. So your mindset is where that starts. How we perceive it really, really matters because if we're not accomplishing our things, then there's a mindset function in there or there's a skill set function. Usually there's a bit of both. And so you want to pay real close attention to what you tell yourself, how frequently you tell it to you, and then begin to address that so it's anchored towards empowerment and curiosity. Not positivity, like I'm the best thing in the world. It's more like, no, I can do this and I'll figure it out even though it sucks. It's okay to have the suck in there. It's, it's going to be, that's life sometimes, right? So mindset. So the next one is energy. So E for energy or emotion. What is the orientation I have towards the thing I'm attempting to accomplish? Am I open? Am I light? Am I expansive? Am I creative? Or am I heavy? Is there shame? Is there frustration? Is there control? Is there doubt? Is there despair? Mm. Often with our work, doubt, despair, and shame show up all the time. So we need to have processes and tools in place that allow us to release those emotions so that we can get back to or touch at least curiosity, lightness, and expansion. And a little trick for you. I use a tool called Light and Heavy a lot in my one-on-one -on -one work and in the group work and in my own life. Light and heavy means that, that it feels light in the body. It's, it's not an emotion. It's a sensation that your body's like, oh, that's light. I like that. Then there's heavy. Heavy's like, oh, it's pressure on the body. Just, eh. Okay. Light equals true for you in this moment. Heavy means false for you in this moment. And if you follow lightness, it's actually going to expand your world. But you don't have to believe me. You can actually test it for yourself and you'll find out that that is reality because that's what it consistently does and has for years 
to myself and my clients and students. So you need to tune into the energy you're bringing to the situation and to your focus. Is it a negative, heavy energy, or is it a positive, open, curious energy? Okay. And we get into choice. This is C for choice. And this is really where we can sabotage things a lot. Okay. So we have a mindset that we want to be empowered. We want to heal. We have the energy or enthusiasm for it. We're open. We're curious about it. Then we come to our choice. What are we going to do to heal? And this is where most everyone sabotages themselves fundamentally. So we see an opportunity for a program or we see a book that's really appealing or we get our hands on a tool that's really light and expansive for us, right? And we don't do it. We don't enroll in the program. We don't invest in the book. We don't do the tool. We don't take the risk. We have effectively sabotaged our healing. We have gotten in our own way at this point. Now we gotta deal with it. We gotta get honest with this, okay? Because when our choices are not congruent with our desire to heal or have happiness, we're never gonna get there. This is what self-sabotage is. This is what we've got to work with so that we can break out of that cycle. So one thing you want to look at is looking at if your choices are in alignment with what you would like to have. Okay, Are they in alignment with your energy, with your mindset, with your focus, with your target? Are you choosing things that are congruent with the outcome you desire? And then lastly, the fourth thing to look at is action. Are your actions aligned with your choices? Are they congruent? If they're not, you will not succeed because, again, now you're sabotaging yourself at the action level. And so, hey, I made the choice to you know, heal my shame, so I'm over here acting out and shaming on myself. You, you, that's not going to work. Or I'm not even applying the tool. That won't work. Okay? There's a reason my systems get a 90-plus percent success rate among my students. Okay? The 90% that do it, the 90% in them, they're the ones who do the work. They're the ones who consistently use these four principles, mindset, energy, choice, and action to maintain their focus on their work, to focus on their healing, their happiness, their confidence, their purpose, their power, okay? Those, the other 10% that don't get those results generally haven't been consistent in the work. They haven't invested in it that way. They may have done some of it and then they stop. Now you just got to come back and keep going. It's persistence that's the, the, the magic or secret ingredient in any kind of system, whether it's healing, whether it's business, whether it's dating, whether it's happiness, whether it's reading a book. You have to persist. It's one of our magical powers. Okay, So you need these four elements of focus in order to achieve healing and happiness in your life. So those four elements, again, are mindset. What's your mindset set up? What energy is in your focus? What are you choosing as your energy? What choices are you making? Are they in alignment with your focus, with what's going to get you where you want to go? And is your action contributing to your choices? Are they congruent or aligned as well? These four steps are going to make a massive difference in your healing and your happiness and the achievement and success you have in your life if you apply them. Okay? So I appreciate you guys being here for this week's, or today's training rather on focus tomorrow we're going to be discussing more about how focus works with healing and with success in general and where you need to pay attention to so that you can actually get more results with the work you're doing okay i appreciate you guys now if you're ready to break free if you're ready to actually heal your codependency and move beyond it I want to invite you to take my master class, The True Cause of Codependency and the Three Things That Heal It. The link is above. You can go to workshop.freethesoft.com and that'll get you right into it. This gives you a special opportunity to have some real one-on-one -on -one training with me. It's an on-demand training, but it teaches you the root cause of codependency and how I heal it and the three steps that you need in order to actually make that happen. Pretty consistent. I've noticed across the board with a lot of different approaches, these are the three things that must happen for us to actually thrive beyond that codependency or that narcissistic abuse, okay? Also, we're going to be opening the next batch or the next class for Get Closure Now. Right now, we just crossed week three. The first class is going, the current class is gonna end here in about three weeks. 
We're going to open the doors for enrollment on July 9th. If you're looking to find actual closure with trauma, this is the class you want to get in on, okay? So you can click the link above or go to closure.freethesoft.com and reserve your spot. Get on the wait list, and then I'll reach out to you on July 9th. We'll get on the phone. We'll have a short consult about what you're experiencing, see if the course is appropriate for your needs, and then go from there, okay? Not everybody will get in. The course is expensive, so it does price some people out. I do have options for uh, certain situations available too, so don't allow that to get in your way. I appreciate you guys being here. If you have any questions or thoughts on this, just comment below. Let me know what you got out of today's training. I appreciate you, and remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in our next training. Have a good night, guys.